In the world of modern aviation, where technology is layered with safety redundancies and every step is scripted down to the millisecond, it should be nearly impossible for a state-of-the-art aircraft to simply fall from the sky seconds after takeoff. But that's exactly what happened with Air India Flight 171, a brand new Boeing 787 Dreamliner operated by experienced pilots with no sign of mechanical failure, vanished from radar less than a minute into flight, leaving behind a trail of devastation and unanswered questions. Now, after months of silence and speculation, scientists and aviation investigators have finally released a report that doesn't just explain what happened. It challenges everything we thought we knew about aircraft automation and Boeing's most advanced systems. It points to two fuel switches that were inexplicably moved to the off position during climb-out, a deliberate action that should have been impossible, and a final cockpit voice exchange that reveals a horrifying truth. The pilots didn't flip the switches, at least not knowingly. What follows is a story of software, silence, and possibly sabotage, a story where pilots weren't flying the plane, the plane was flying itself straight into disaster. When the first black box was recovered from a rooftop, bruised but not broken, investigators hoped it would reveal a clean trail of evidence. And at first glance, it did. Altitude, heading, gear position, all normal. But within seconds after takeoff, one anomaly appeared. The aircraft's RAM air turbine, RAT, deployed. That's the emergency windmill that drops from the aircraft when there's a total loss of engine or hydraulic power. On a Boeing 787, that should only happen under catastrophic circumstances. Both engines out, no power to the flight controls. But here's what shook analysts to the core. The rat deployed four to five seconds after liftoff. That's not just unusual, that's impossible under normal failure sequences. Engines spin down at low altitude should take tens of seconds, not moments. Something didn't just go wrong, something shut off. As more data streamed in from the second black box, a chilling detail surfaced. Both fuel control switches were found in the cutoff position. These are not casual switches. They are physically protected, require a lift and pull action, and are never touched during takeoff. In fact, they're designed specifically to prevent accidental activation. For them to move, someone had to deliberately do it, or the system had to receive a false signal to do so. But as you'll soon learn, what if the switches weren't the problem? What if something else was telling the plane to shut itself down? Let's talk about those switches. The Boeing 787's fuel controls are not digital buttons you tap. They're analog levers placed under a guarded detent. To move them from run to cutoff, a pilot has to follow three precise steps, lift, pull, lower. Even during an engine out emergency at cruising altitude, the Boeing emergency checklist requires a momentary cutoff, followed by an immediate return to run to attempt a restart. But during takeoff, those switches are never touched. So when investigators examined the flight data recorder and found that both fuel levers moved to cutoff within one second of each other, red flags exploded. There's simply no way two pilots could physically complete those actions simultaneously without coordination. Even more disturbing, the voice recorder picked up one pilot asking, why did you switch it to off? And the other replying, I didn't switch it to off. That exchange is now the smoking gun. Because either both pilots were lying or something more terrifying occurred. The aircraft interpreted a signal that was never sent and executed an action that neither human approved. With no evidence of mechanical failure and a chilling voice recording that suggests the pilots didn't flip the switches, the focus shifted toward software, specifically the electronic engine control EEC system a digital brain that interprets pilot inputs and translates them into engine behavior. On paper, the EEC shouldn't be able to override physical fuel switches. But in practice, the integration between hardware and software on the 787 is so complex, even Boeing engineers admit there are logic layers that aren't fully transparent to the pilot. Could a software anomaly, corrupted logic chain, or electrical spike have mimicked a command that cut off fuel to both engines? If so, we're no longer talking about pilot error or mechanical malfunction. We're talking about a systemic vulnerability inside the most advanced aircraft ever built. One where human pilots are no longer the final authority, 
because somewhere along the digital chain, a ghost is whispering commands that no one can trace. To understand how something like this could happen, we need to zoom out. Because this isn't the first time Boeing's design decisions have come under scrutiny. After the deadly crashes of the 737 MAX, the world learned about MCAS, a software system that could override pilot input and push an aircraft's nose down without warning. That disaster wasn't just about a bad system. It was about a culture, one where outsourced coding, underfunded testing, and lax FAA oversight led to catastrophic outcomes. And now, echoes of that culture are surfacing again in Flight 171. Whistleblowers like Sam Salapore have testified about quality control lapses in 787 production, improperly fastened fuselage sections, incorrect documentation, and silent design changes. In April 2024, the FAA forced a halt in Dreamliner deliveries due to structural joint defects. The same aircraft that fell from the sky on June 13th was part of a production batch flagged for review. Coincidence? Experts say the 787's over-automation, combined with opaque internal logic, creates a scenario where software is king and pilots are left in the dark when things go wrong. Add to that a company under immense pressure to cut costs and deliver planes faster, and you have a recipe for a design flaw so deeply embedded it may never fully be acknowledged. In the aftermath of the crash, Boeing and aviation regulators tried to replicate the flight scenario in full-motion simulators. Test pilots attempted to simulate dual fuel switch cutoffs just seconds after takeoff under similar weight, speed, and atmospheric conditions. And yet time after time, the aircraft in the simulator managed to glide longer, giving the pilot more time to respond, more time to restart an engine, more time to issue a mayday. But Air India Flight 171, it dropped like a stone. Within 36 seconds of liftoff, it slammed into an apartment block with both engines dead and the rat spinning helplessly in the wind. This discrepancy raised an urgent question. Why did the real aircraft behave so much worse than the simulator predicted? Was it an extreme outlier? An undetected secondary failure? Or was the simulator lacking the exact software version or configuration present in the doomed aircraft? Captain Ravi, a former 787 Czech airman, explained it this way. We're not simulating the airplane. We're simulating the version of the airplane Boeing lets us see. That chilling truth implies something deeper. What if the real aircraft was running code that had not been validated, or worse, updated without proper pilot retraining? Every aircraft keeps a maintenance log, a living document that records faults, repairs, deferred items, and engineering notes. When the logs for Flight 171 were examined, an unsettling pattern began to emerge. Just two days before the crash, the aircraft experienced an electrical fault on Engine 2. A few hours later, technicians logged a reset of EEC parameters on both engines. The issue was cleared with a software reboot and no parts replaced. It's easy to dismiss that as routine. After all, aircraft faults are common, and most are resolved with resets. But here's the problem. This wasn't the first time this specific airframe had experienced it. Over a six-month period, engineers logged multiple entries for unexplained EEC anomalies, always cleared with a reboot always dismissed as minor. Now, seen through the lens of a dual engine failure caused by fuel cutoff, those anomalies take on a terrifying new context. What if they weren't minor? What if they were symptoms of a deeper flaw, one that engineers couldn't see and pilots were never warned about? More disturbingly, Boeing never issued a service bulletin regarding these incidents. There was no global alert, no software patch, no flight operations notice, just silence. And now, 56 lives are gone because a line of code kept misbehaving in plain sight. In every aviation accident, timing is everything. One second too soon, and a system fails before backup kicks in. One second too late, and the pilot loses the moment to recover. In the case of Flight 171, the Ram Air Turbine deployment should have followed a very specific sequence. Power loss, engine flame out, then rat extension after the aircraft recognized the emergency. But the flight data showed something impossible. The rat deployed before the cockpit voice recorder captured the pilot's realization of the power loss. In other words, the aircraft detected and responded to the crisis before the humans even understood what was happening. This opens two possible, 
and equally disturbing scenarios. First, the RAT deployment was triggered not by actual failure, but by a false system input, tricking the aircraft into believing it had lost all power. Or second, the failure was so fast, so total, that the aircraft's automated systems had no time to wait for pilot confirmation. They acted on instinct, algorithmic instinct. Either way, the human crew was no longer in command. The aircraft had entered a fully automated death spiral, controlled by a logic tree the pilots could neither see nor override. It wasn't that they failed to respond. It was that they were never given a chance. In the months following the crash, independent aviation watchdogs began tracing the evolution of Boeing's predictive maintenance algorithms, systems designed to anticipate failures using machine learning. These tools feed data from every 787 into centralized servers where patterns are analyzed and proactive maintenance alerts are issued. The idea is simple, fix problems before they happen. But here's the twist. Flight 171's last five flights showed abnormal but non-critical fluctuations in fuel flow readings and electrical handoff between generators. On paper, they were within tolerance. But when the data was reprocessed using an updated AI model post-crash, the new system flagged them as event precursors. Too late. That means Boeing had the data. They just didn't have the tools or the urgency to read it correctly. Worse yet, the predictive systems didn't just miss the warning signs. They may have actively suppressed them due to outdated logic. What we're left with is a horrifying realization. The crash of Air India Flight 171 may have been predicted preventable and pre-coded into a machine that didn't yet know how to speak clearly. Because sometimes the danger isn't what the pilot sees, it's what the computer refuses to say. In the final moments of Air India Flight 171, the passengers never knew they were part of a system unraveling from within. There were no frantic mayday calls, no sputtering engines echoing through the sky. Just a seamless ascent, a sudden silence, and then oblivion. 36 seconds was all it took for a marvel of modern aviation to become a ghost etched into blackened rooftops. But this wasn't just an accident. It was a perfect storm of overlooked code, misread signals and blind trust. A tragedy not born of fire or ice, but of logic gates and automated decisions made too fast for humans to stop. The real cause behind Flight 171 wasn't just a flipped switch or a missed checklist. It was something far more terrifying. A moment when the aircraft stopped listening to its pilots and started listening only to itself. And now we know that Boeing had the data. The anomalies were there. The patterns were visible. The warning signs were quietly recorded, time-stamped, and uploaded into a system that saw everything and did nothing. Maybe that's the future of flight. Algorithms making split-second decisions, optimizing performance, cutting costs. But in this pursuit of automation, we've lost something critical. Not just human control, but human accountability. When no one knows who flipped the switch, who's to blame when everything shuts down? Flight 171 may go down in history as just another accident. But for those who looked closer, it's something else entirely. It's a signal, a silent one. One written in data, buried in logs, and screamed through the wreckage of a machine that knew something was wrong, but never told anyone. And if we don't listen now, we may never hear the next one coming.